Hey guys, today we're going to talk about growing strawberries in zip grow towers. We know there are a lot of questions out there and we figured this is a good time to answer them. Okay, so um, today we're planting a bunch of strawberries uh, in our zip farm and um, it's a good opportunity to chat about planting strawberries from rootstock. So um, planting strawberries from rootstock is a little bit different uh, than planting a lot of other crops. Strawberries are really kind of a long-term crop, so they're going to be growing there sometimes for as long as a year. And you want to make sure that you do it right, you take a little extra time on the front end to make sure that your strawberries are planted correctly. So when we're planting strawberries, uh, we want to understand a few things that are really different about strawberries compared to other crops. Um, strawberries are uh, quite different, okay, than a lot of other crops. And it's not just because they live for a long time and because we want to make sure that they stay healthy in the system. Strawberries are susceptible to a lot of different diseases. Um, and most of that is just the fact that they're there for a really long time compared to greens, compared to a lot of other crops that are in and out in a few weeks. So um, the big thing with strawberries is, of course, uh, crown and uh, mostly, mostly crown rots, so heart rots. Um, the way you can tell is uh, when you cut, uh, this is kind of the crown of the plant, this is where the, uh, the roots uh, become stem, okay? And it's a very susceptible region on the plant. And uh, for strawberries, if you cut this open, uh, oftentimes it'll be purple or pink in the interior, uh, indicating that there's like pythium or some other uh, type of uh, disease organism there so um, we have to take we have to keep that in mind when we're planting strawberries and we want to make sure that we, we keep that crown above the wet area so the great thing about towers is that we can control kind of where that crown is at and we can make sure that it stays out of kind of the the wet zone in the tower so um, when we're planting these uh, starting with selecting good uh, rootstock we want to make sure uh, we want to make sure that we're selecting the best possible rootstock. So if you have the luxury of being able to pick between a lot of different plants, you can begin to see differences in the diameter, right, of, of the stems, right? See, so the, the crown on this one, the, the stem uh, on, on this uh, plant is much, much uh, thicker, okay, than this one. The, the bigger the plant, the faster it starts to produce, okay? So what we're talking about is a lot more energy, starting energy for this plant, rather than kind of this, uh, let me find a skinny little one, rather than this skinny little one, right? So uh, you can't really tell there. There's, there's some much larger ones here. Here's a good example. So compare that one to that one. This is a better plant. This is the plant that we want to start with. This will, will grow much faster right out of the gate and will end up producing more. So when we're planting strawberries, we typically plant from rootstock and not from seed. And the reason for that is most strawberry reproduction is vegetative. So it's sending out runners. Um, basically, the, the, the plant is cloning itself, right? It's a much faster, much more efficient way uh, for the plant to reproduce. Seeds are, uh, you, you can grow from seeds, but they take a long time. The thing to understand is that strawberries are a perennial plant. That means they come back year after year after year. And it takes them some time to build up the mass to begin to uh, begin reproducing uh, reproductively, right? So flowering and producing fruits, that takes time. Oftentimes as producers, we don't want to wait for that. And you can't afford to have strawberry seedlings sitting in your seedling system for a year before they're productive. So uh, for those reasons, we start with rootstock. Now starting with rootstock can be um, a little bit dangerous because it's typically coming out of the field. Strawberries are renowned for bringing pathogens with them. So it's important if you're going to plant rootstock to make sure that they've been sterilized in some way, you've done some type of fungicidal dunk or something to, to keep uh, kind of those soil and field pathogens out of your hydroponic system, if possible. So um, as far as planting these goes, I'll do these on this side so that it's nice and obvious uh, to you guys how it kind of works. Um, but when we're planting uh, towers with strawberries, uh, I like to, uh, let me see, let me check on something. When you're planting this rootstock, you want, uh, most of these will be shaped this way, right? Because they're propagated from a runner. 
So you'll have kind of uh, your little plant here, and you've got kind of the shoots here, you've got the roots here, and then you've got this stocky little stump, which was the, which was the runner that originally started this plant, okay? So we're gonna take this plant, and um, if this is the bottom of our insert, this is our fold right here, uh, we wanna make sure that we plant this with the plant facing up, like so, okay? And uh, what this does for us is it means as water is moving down through our tower, it's hitting these roots, and it's flowing down into the back. If you plant it like this, the water will hit the roots, run down the plant, and drip off of the strawberry. And we'll start to get moisture around this crown, which is bad. We don't like moisture around the crown. So, uh, we take our rootstock, and uh, the nice thing is because these were propagated by runner, they always have a little bit of a twist to them. So you wanna take that twist and have it pointing up so that when it's folded, the plant kind of has this upward twist to it. Um, what that ultimately does for us is it makes sure that uh, we, we keep all of that moisture to the back. You'll notice too that the wicking strip is set back. Uh, we're, we're using our wicking strip properly. If you put it all the way to the front with strawberries especially, you will have crown rots, you will have heart rots, you will have problems down the road. So when we're planting, um, when we're planting towers with this, uh, you, you can, once you kind of get in the swing of things, you can you typically go pretty quickly. Um, but I do encourage people to take more time and make sure that they're doing it right uh, the first time around with strawberries. Because you're gonna live with these, with these things, right? Um, these are gonna be around for a while. So you wanna make sure you plant them the way you want, and you wanna make sure you're picking the best possible plants um, to put in your system. You don't wanna mess around with runts of the litter when you've got the option to plant something bigger. Strawberries can be a really productive crop in these systems, and uh, we love to see uh, folks planting strawberries. If you know kind of just some of these fundamental things, keeping in mind, you know, how to keep that, that uh, the crown of the plant nice and dry, how to keep uh, the, the, the plants really, really healthy, you can get really, really great production, typically two to three times what you could do in a lot of other techniques. So um, I highly encourage people to experiment with strawberries. Hopefully this video was useful to you and uh, you'll be able to use it as you go forward to plant lots of strawberries, grow lots of strawberries, and have some fun. So for more information on the different crops you can grow, uh, check out uh, some of our free online resources, check out the blog, and of course if you want to learn more about growing indoors or outdoors, check out Upstart University. It's the probably the best online resource for learning more about farming on a small scale.